Hey, Dr. C here with you. You know, I've been a therapist for over 40 years and I've heard many stories about people who are at this time of year in the holiday season and they're kind of questioning, what am I going to do during this holiday time when I'm supposed to have, you know, peace on earth and goodwill towards everybody else? When in fact, I have some very difficult individuals in my world and it's less than peaceful when I go through this particular time of year. Now, I always consider it a privilege when somebody talks with me that way because it allows me to step into their world with an arm of encouragement around them. Actually, it is possible for you to find your peace during this time of year, knowing that there might be some expectations out there, but maybe you need to uh, take a little uh, change in your tactics as to how you're going to approach it. I want to talk with you about that. Now, before we get there, I've got five tips I want to give to you. I want to just share with you some comments that have come to me literally just within the last three or four days. And I want to talk with you about what uh, other individuals experience that might match with some of the things that you deal with. This first person writes in and says, it's one week before Christmas. And I'm reminded that going to see my narcissistic mother is a totally unpleasant experience for me and my husband. We leave her home, and my first thought is, why did we even bother coming here? Or another person writes in, they hate anyone who, feels, who they feel is better or smarter than themselves. So there's a need to bring you down at the first opportunity. The person in my family has a knack for creating drama and then making herself a victim in front of everyone else. This next one, and this is one of these crazy makers, writes in that says, the narcissist in my life can't consider a differing pre preference, and he doesn't like the instability of second-guessing himself. So, uh, his first interpretation of any deviation from his expectations is to antagonize you and then say you're inviting his wrath upon yourself. Go figure. It's called displacement, by the way. And then uh, the, the last one here, this person says, I've always been the person in my family who likes to stay open to, other, to, to others, different viewpoints. Being at family gatherings, though, is all, always turns into an opinion fest. The, they all blather about who they hate and who's stupid. And then when I speak up, they look at me like I'm a complete idiot who doesn't know up from down. Now, these are some of the milder cases that I uh, could, uh, could point you to. Some of you have situations that are even more difficult than that. So we go back to that question, is it possible for you to find peace? And the answer is yes, but the key for you is to remember, it has to be an inside out kind of mindset as opposed to an outside in. You can't count on those folks out there to give you everything you want, but you can find your own sense of well-being from the inside out. So that being the case, Tip number one that I want to give you is when you're dealing with these hard and difficult individuals and they're trying to let you know that you don't measure up, consider the source. These are individuals who've been carrying internal tension and pain probably their entire lives. And uh, it has nothing to do with you. And when you're gone, it's likely to continue with, with or without your presence Understand they're wanting to make their strain about you, but it's not. Stay objective with respect to what you have there in front of you. Tip number two, question the extent of your obligations. You know, this is a time of year where you can feel like you're duty bound to be at certain places or to uh, see individuals that perhaps you don't uh, want to see and you know that they have requirements and expectations during this time of year. But you know what? You're not duty bound. Uh, you don't have to play along, especially when it means playing along with something that's terribly unhealthy. Remind yourself, I'm a free person and I get to choose who I'm going to be and how I'm going to conduct myself and where I'm going to be. And so uh, we're going to say, appreciate the concept of what I call delicate detachment. You need to know when to just simply pull back. Now a third tip that I'd give you, and that is, don't tug on the rope that's tied to a donkey. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. So many times that narcissistic person wants to pull you in 
and they want to make you think like they do, or they want to argue with you, or they want to uh, make you realize that uh, you're not doing the things the way you're supposed to do. Uh, you need to be more like them, and you can feel inclined to kind of do the same in reverse. How many times does that work? When you pull on that person, you try to persuade them and argue with them and get them to, to, to think better than what they are, they have one thought on their mind, and that is game on, and they'll play their games with you as long as you participate. And so save your breath in your attempts to persuade, and then calmly, confidently remind yourself, uh, you have your opinion, you may have your opinion, I have mine, I'm okay with that. Tip number four, if necessary, physically remove yourself. Now, sometimes you may be in a situation where you just simply don't need to be in the person's presence, period, end of discussion. You don't need to be around that individual. And if that's the case, do so and don't hold any kind of guilt for that. If there's uh, been some sort of strain or abuse or tension or trauma bond, that's a reasonable thought. Other times, it may be that you'll need to be with somebody, but you don't need to be with them as long as they want you to, as long as the requirement might say. Sometimes you're in the presence of individuals, and you may just need to take a walk or uh, go somewhere else. But basically, uh, you want to say, I'm going to prioritize self-care. And whatever kind of parameters I need to establish physically, and if I need to remove myself, I'm willing to do so, either in the full sense or in partial steps. And then step number five, or tip number five, <clears throat> and that is a lot time for activities that you enjoy. I mean, it may be that there's a movie that's out that you want to go see. Go see it. It may be that there's some music that you enjoy. You want to pull back in your quiet space and, and enjoy your favorite music. That's one of my things that I like to do. It may be that you'll take some time in nature or that you'll uh, uh, prioritize time with other individuals who may not be on the inside circle with that narcissist, but they're your inside circle. Or it could be that you just simply want to sleep in and, and relax and not be too bothered. In other words, celebrate your own uniqueness behaviorally, okay? So peace is wonderful when you're able to ideally share it with the people in your life that are uh, connected with you in one way or another. And it's, it's, it is good to, to know the essence and live the essence of love as long as the individuals in your life are safe. But then when that narcissist becomes too unsafe, I'm hoping you can decide within yourself, I genuinely care about my own well-being. So much so that if I'm required to go into a different path, I'm willing to do that. I'm worth it. Prioritize love. And uh, if, if possible, offer it to individuals who know how to receive and reciprocate that love. And then um, hold on to your sense that says, I'm a person of dignity, respect, and civility, and I can be at peace with that. Mr. Peace back here, Gus, and I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you for allowing me to be on your path with you. I truly hope that this is a good time of year for you. I'll see you next time.